Very exciting. I gave a multi-day, multi-island tour to a group visiting from Annapolis, Maryland. They were here to do a battlefield then study. Then they landed the uh, 27th division here. And so they started to push. They're trying to cut off the island. And then they would switch north. So the plan was to take them around to all of the pillboxes and bunkers and blockhouses and tanks uh, around Saipan so they could get a feel for what the Battle of Saipan and uh, ultimately the Battle of Tinian as well. <laughs> really fun group, had a lot of fun as well, learned a lot of uh, valuable information about all right. the all you got. Uh, battles. I mean, yeah. Did a little shopping as well. My driver for the day was Willie Kaitabu. Here we are at Coral Ocean Point overlooking Tinian. Special guest Eva Chamorita discusses culture. Suicide Cliff, a lot of local history shared, a lot of World War II history shared, Calabara Cave, this is the last command post in Marpi, Old Japanese Jail in search of Amelia Earhart. So this is where she may have been held. And when you see this in a documentary, you'll be able to say, hey, I was there. I was there. And if you don't know that story, check out a History Channel documentary on Amelia. And All that's right, how we wrapped care. up the day. All right, Thanks. see you tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. All right. Tomorrow we'll be on our way to Tinian. Bright and early next morning, we head to Tinian. First, we did a stop at Herman's Modern Bakery. <laughs> Site of the first business on Saipan and in Micronesia. Still have a little time before our charter takes off, so we go through the usual morning ritual. This time, Becca led the ritual. On the scale for correct weight distribution on our plane, and we're on our way. Alright, I'm now uh, with seven members of the U.S. Naval Academy, uh, Annapolis, Maryland, and we're heading on our way to Tinian. obligatory picture at the Welcome to Tinian sign. Keep walking. On our way to the Japanese defense caves. <laughs> Got stragglers. Like, like <laughs> Heading back. Stop the Tinian blowhole. Now, one of the rules of my tour that I stressed on day one was that you should leave with no regrets. 
so based on Charlie's request to take a dip in the pool by the blowhole, uh, we indulged his no regrets request. And the team, uh, this, was, this one is the first for me, but the team took a dip in the pool and we captured some nice photos. Somber part of the trip. We're now on runway Abel. Uh, we're here on runway Abel, the site of the departure of the Enola Gay and the boxcar before completing their uh, missions to drop atomic weapons on Japan. Next, the bomb pits, bomb pits one and two. And Carson shares his knowledge of fusion and fission, helped out by Aiden. Tinian Mayor's Office, Edwin P. Alden, Mayor. Everyone gets a, an autographed copy of Don Farrell's book, Tinian and the Bomb. In interacting with the population, what would you want us to know? I know it's like there's a lot to tell us, but like, is there any like, like one major thing or like something you would uh, expect out of us? Great question, and if you want to hear um, Mayor Alden's answer, you'll have to uh, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be notified when I put the full Q&A on the uh, up for viewing. A couple other stops along Tinian before we had to rush back. Folks at American Memorial Park were nice enough to uh, grant us access, even though the park was closed, even though the visitor center was closed. So we got to watch the documentary, learn, get some more valuable information, and call it a day. Another packed day of cultural immersion. Started out with a trek to Forbidden Island. A moment of silence and reverence to the Atautamona. And we're on our way. Took about 25 minutes of the trek to get down to the island. This group held up quite well. You made it to Forbidden Island. You're used to tracks and rappelling and exploring. Now we're on our way to a secret location with a, a cave pool that a lot of people don't know about. Got yourself a good guide to take you there. And we're heading back. Next stop, John Castro from the Seafaring Traditions right, Program. Okay. We'll work on the bottom of the canoe first, mm -hmm. and then we flip it over, and now we're digging it. And then we can step into the canoe house and see the rest of uh, what we've been doing after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So this is Tony. Master navigator, master canoe builder. Yeah, like I said, you guys have time to sit on your phones and uh, look up Papa Mao. Papa Mao is Tony's Papa father. M A O. M A U. M A U. Papa yeah. Mao. It's there's uh, the story of his father when he was uh, reviving the, the celestial navigation in Polynesia. <laughs> right through the impossible. <laughs> A walk in, yeah. A lot of great questions and answers from this group. Thanks to John. And you can't experience culture without experiencing food. 
And Pat is a farmer as well. Pat Calvo from Kim's. I'll do a formal introduction in a while. As Pat said, food and culture go together. Saipan Tribune, Sydney Takahashi. Aiden gets some instruction on canoe building. For a can position? That's What's, how do I do with my hands? No, you just relax it. Uh, yeah, relax it. You're right handed, right? Yep. So the right and the back, then the left will. Got it, huh? I'm here right outside the canoe project, and we just had a canoe demonstration, a talk by John Castro, catered food by Pat Calvo, and now we're sort of wrapping things up. The uh, midshipmen got a chance to. Uh, swim out to the Sherman tank in the lagoon. So now we are wrapping up, everyone's drying off, and we'll be calling it a day in a few minutes. It's John Castro holding court for a few more minutes. Uh, Maria Pallada talking to Pat Calvo. Carson looks like he's chewing beetle nut. Uh, I want to say they kind of utilize the knowledge of the Carolinians because they know how to sail yeah. to those islands out there. Right. So they, be, they also become farmers of cattle. So there's, there's, the same cattle. Same. there's some. There's some. There's some. And the group will wrap okay, up with an yeah. evening dip All in right, the take lagoon, care. and we'll call it a day. Special thanks to J.M. Guerrero for giving everyone a copy of a collector's item Saipan pictorial. And thanks to Fish Guys Scuba for taking care of the group for the next two days. Thanks to Fabian Indelesio for sharing his amazing, mind-blowing collection of Battle of Saipan relics. Battle of Saipan and Battle of Tinian. Here are basically, you know, more of, I would say, 100%. No, um, I'm very new to this and I'm wanting the relics that they are from here. I don't really care for, uh, what do you call it, ordering on uh, eBay or whatever. I don't care for. I don't care for really from any other country or anything else other than just uh, the common of the North American because going and going during the invasion and then they, later on after they uh, clear the island then they come back and they pick this up when they pick it up some of them uh, missed it up not to, to uh, find this yeah, yeah. 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 yeah this one's got the bayonet on so yeah that's why I just put that the bayonet there but uh, other than that you're gonna see the, the real one that has the bayonet okay. that's the big one and then, okay so So I've heard, this is a reserve unit. Here. Yes, this is a reserve that uh, is attached to Hawaii. How big? Is it? And we have just a few more moments before the departure. Back to Guam and beyond. <laughs> John Christian of Star Marianas shares some of the uh, immigration uh, uniqueness of Saipan. CBP, Customs and Border Protection, clears the group. All right. Say bye to Dave. Say hi to David Anderson. And they're on their way.
All right, take care. Bye bye. All right, take care. Bye -bye. Group two is on its way. Mission accomplished. If you'd like to experience some more fun, you can check out the blog at discoversaipan.com slash blog, B-L-O-G.